drone and take questions? Yeah, it was good. Uh, you know, felt felt uh, felt like at the beginning there was a little bit of rust coming off a day yesterday where we were a little slower tempo walkthrough, but then as practice went along, I thought we uh, started doing some really nice things and. Uh, but uh, there'll still be some stuff to improve on and, and going into these next two days. Next two days are a lot like a Tuesday and Wednesday for us, so excited about that, and we're going to get a lot of good work. I know you guys focus on yourselves more than anything, but do you start looking at UNC a little bit now? Yeah, yeah, we definitely do, you know, and, you, and, and I think I'm sure they're looking at us, and, you know, we're all doing that around the country a little bit this week and, and some even maybe before this week. But, uh, no, it's the perfect mix, though, of not getting too far outside of those still your own fundamentals and your own stuff, but starting to get sprinkles, starting to get sprinkles of it, and uh, guys are handling it the right way. Are you able to see the type of tempo you'd like to see out of the offense consistently moving the ball yet, or is that still coming along? Yeah, I think at times, you know, we've gotten to see it, and you get to see it more when the officials are out here and it's a scrimmage format. Okay. It's tough sometimes in practice to simulate all the mechanics of getting the ball to the official and getting, you know, certain things like that, whereas when you get in that scrimmage mode and you're truly moving the ball exactly where it goes, never back, you know, you sometimes you spot the ball back and you do that it's harder to get into that you know so in our scrimmages though I felt like we've understood what that tempo feels like and that's why at times during the season I like doing things as an offense even just on air you know so you feel just more or less the tempo of it, the tempo of it, the tempo of it, even without scouts you know just just for our guys to, to, to feel exactly what that uh, what that kind of you know that flow feels like how are you feeling about your ability to convert the red zone? We saw a couple, of, a little bit of it yesterday. Yo, know, I definitely think we're taking strides. We're a long way from where we need to be because I do think there's still a lot of opportunities in this camp where our percentages need to be even better than they were in a certain red zone practice. Um, but definitely in the last scrimmage we got put down there early and were able to convert a couple and uh, definitely made some plays down here also you know a couple days ago when we had a lot of red zone we had those situational times where even there were seconds on the clock and we were kind of playing those out like they were before half and uh, guys made plays so we're taking strides but it has to carry over it has to carry over into games and uh, and and we just got to keep growing in that process as far as the running backs are concerned, are you starting to a uh, rotation starting to come into focus? And how many do you think you'll use? And because you've got now, as opposed to spring, now you've got quite a number of guys. Yeah, we're starting to see a little bit of a rotation, what that can kind of look like. Um, but I feel it out in a game. I, I don't go in, you know. I mean, you go in with a, you know, an idea, but. I think in every game you got to adjust. You have to adjust to what's happening, how they're playing, how many snaps you're getting, are you more leaning on run or pass, depending on what they're doing. So there's always kind of a, a little bit of that, you know, adjust in a game on what could happen. But, you know, I could see us, you know, throughout the year, I could see four or even five different guys playing. What that rotation exactly looked like just kind of depends how it all goes and the health of everybody. As guys behind Laird started to separate themselves? Yeah, I wouldn't even say separate. I just think they continue to improve. You know, you could sit here and say, do you have a definite two? Yeah, we could name maybe a two now, but maybe that three is right on his heels. And that four is even on his heels. And he's a little younger, but still we see a future. So, yeah, it's less about maybe they've separated and more about they continue to build confidence in us as a team and us as coaches in what our two, what our three, what our four, what those guys could potentially do, uh, you know, when given the opportunity. If at all, how would you say your offensive identity is changing with so many big tight end targets and Mo coming in at receiver too with that big body? I just think it's we're, we're becoming more versatile, you know, and I think you, you become a little less predictable with guys who are versatile. That's at the end of the day what you have with tight ends, you know, when they're when they're versatile to be, you know, spread out a little bit or, you know, to be in, you know, wing sets and things like that. It gives you a chance to to just truly keep a team off balance with what you're going to do on the, you know, you could be in the same personnel and be in, you know, obviously a totally different look formation wise. And we didn't necessarily do that quite as much last year. You know, we had, we had really good players at certain spots, but they didn't weren't necessarily as versatile in terms of certain situations you want to put them in. So it does. And the depth of it, you know, I mean, you just have you have depth of guys to be able to, you know, give a defense different looks. You know, Ray and Ian are different looks than, than you know, Malik will be or, you know, Kyle Wells coming in. I mean, it's just different looks for those guys to handle on defense, which is which is always fun. You've got a really big tight end room you're meeting with all the yeah, time. A lot yeah. of weapons. Oh, yeah, it's fun. It's been a lot of fun. Ray Hudson, Sam.
pretty positive yesterday about the consistency of the offense. Are you starting to feel them kind of stack practices on top of each other now? I am, I, especially in these last, you know, this last week since the, probably the day before the scrimmage and then even the scrimmage, I, I felt like there's been some of that stacking. You know, and you still have your lulls and you still have your moments, just like you will in the season. I mean, you're going to have a second quarter that wasn't very good, you know, and you just, you know that those are going to happen. But we're, we've been able to, I feel like, rebound from those a lot quicker. You know, then in, in sometimes what I felt like in the past we'd get in a lull and we couldn't get ourselves out of it. And our guys get themselves out of it. You know, they don't hang their heads. They, they come back firing on the next one. So, um, yeah, that, that definitely is, uh, is something that uh, I think has taken a little better shape in the last week. Noah missed a lot, of, obviously, this spring and now. Has he come all the way back? Is he 100 percent? Is he everything? How's he yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't, <laughs> I see the same, con the convoy that I remember. I mean, every time he's, you know, in there to have to make a play and do that, you saw it in a fourth down in the scrimmage. You know, he made a big time play, you know, with a guy draped on him. So, so yeah, I don't see any different. Are you seeing Vic all the way back in that same vein? I am. I am. I mean, he's probably, you know, he, he might be a little, I wouldn't say behind, you know, Conavai, but he's he's right there. He's, mm -hmm. like I said, he's making plays. Shoot, he had, I don't know, you know, he had a few catches in the scrimmage, and, you know, he wasn't even practicing for, you know, a number of those weeks, too. So, yeah, yeah, both of those guys are, are getting themselves back to that to that spot and you know but it takes time you know when you're coming off an injury or you're coming off you know certain times where you weren't practicing it just takes the timing and just that that whole thing takes a little time so I think you'll see even bigger jumps from Vic this week if you have to ask me from this week until about the middle of next week I think you're going to see a huge huge jump. There were a couple of days where it seemed like the quarterbacks were a little less accurate than they had been earlier Did it, does it feel like they're a little back on track and is the defense throwing a little bit more wrinkles as they're continuing to install their defense? Yeah you know I don't you know sometimes you know you miss on some things you know it's as much as anything it's like you know sometimes you can't explain why did a pitcher walk seven batters when he usually only walks one sometimes there's well I don't know <laughs> you know it's just one of those deals where maybe they were just you know missed on a few that day or it can be our defense does a good job with disguising things and all of a sudden you know they get a couple looks that day that that you know weren't clean to them maybe it's the first time they saw them so yeah, it was, uh, you know, we're going to definitely have days like that, you know, a little bit. But what I felt like, they've, I've never felt like they've swung too far. And they've, I've never felt like they've stacked, you know, inaccurate days on top of each other. You know, they're always able to rebound and come back. So that's that's led to some, you know, some really good consistency at the position. Should we end this with a little bit of levity? We were asking uh, Coach Wilcox yesterday about what's his favorite kind of pie. And I want to pose that question to you. Blackberry. I, like no, I grew up. I grew up eating blackberry pie. How's that? I haven't eaten it in a long time. Don't see it a lot, but that's it. All right. Fair enough. Thanks, Thanks guys. Appreciate it.